Welcome back. I'm Rob Lang and this is my game Clomper. You live inside a mechanical ladybird called a Clomper, which you control by making pipes to power machines with steam. The outside world is a hellscape, which you explore from inside the Clomper, gathering resources and completing quests. That sounds like fun. Go wishlist on Steam. Hello there, probably wondering where I've been. Where haven't I been? <laughs> Can't even start. I'll explain at the end, but I've been doing graphics, chipping away bit by bit, and it's been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to showing you some of the new stuff. Now graphics can be a bit of an endless task of fiddling and twiddling, and I've tried to avoid that by making a plan. The first thing I had to do was simplify a very complicated shader, which I'll come to next. With that done, I could pick a new palette and then begin remodeling the floor and then improving the lighting and eventually I'll get on to improving animations, putting more particles in. But that's kind of where I'm at. My original solution, way back in 2019, was to have all the pipes built as single meshes in Blender. That would allow me to build loads of them really quickly because I could copy and paste the polygons onto different pipes. That in itself isn't a bad idea. However, I had this feature that I needed where I wanted the mouse to hover over a steam port and for it to light up just like this. But how do you do that if they're all one mesh? Well, you do that using UVs. Each of these steam ports is a different UV. It's better to see this in the shader. I've zoomed into the shader here because the whole thing's pretty upsetting. On the left, we have a mask which is one pixel. That square there is a single pixel. It's only 16 by 16. And on the right hand side here, we have the colors for the pipe. And you see you have all these yellow ones are all the different possible steam ports. So this square here would mask off just the square on the top here. So if I wanted to select just the steam port that has this one here, I'd use this mask. Now, of course, I need another mask that has the square just below it and another one with the square just below it going all the way down to the eight different ports that are possible. Okay, yes, that is quite limiting, but I'll come back to that. Now, this shader became very complicated very quickly. And one of the big issues with it is I do a lot of branching. Every time you use this branch, it actually creates a whole new shader. That's not very good for performance because every time you go down a branch, it needs to reset the shader on the graphics card, and that's slow. That sounds all very sensible, but at some point, I'm going to have to make a lot of pipes, and creating them in Unity from a single mesh is actually quite a lot of work. How about cutting up the pipes in Blender and exporting the pieces into Unity and building the pipes out of the individual bits. So for this one, we have a three-way in the center. We have some straight short pieces and we have, best of all, the steam port. And the steam ports being separate models means that they have separate materials and you can set them differently. You don't need to do any of that UV mapping nonsense, which is brilliant. I can also make a pipe editor scene in Unity, which would be handy for me, but also good for modders. I've completely lost control of my eyebrows. It could be worse. I'm in my mid 40s. I'm bound to start losing control of things. Now I know what you're thinking. You've been watching the video dev blogs. You know that for each of these pipes, I actually have two prefabs. This one that you actually build with and another one that's simpler for the inventory. Having two of a thing means that it's quite easy to get out of step, especially if you've got a lot of them. I did try merging them down into one. <laughs> that went very badly. The code ended up with lots of if statements. If you're in the inventory, do this. If you're not in the inventory, do that. And if you have lots of if statements that pick between two different things, you have two separate things and you should just split them out. However, if I'm going to build a pipe editor, then the pipe editor can make sure that both of them are kept up to date. So you only really edit one once. So what about performance? That's suddenly quite a lot of meshes that I'll be importing. Now, I firmly believe that you should never guess performance. You should do it, measure it, and then fix it if it's too slow. But if I were to measure it and fix it many years in the future, then that would be bad. 
because it would be a lot of work to change it all back. So we can do a little bit of mathematics to work out how big is big. Well, the volume of the clomper, ignoring all of the stations, is 8,873 units. That's 8,873 of these. You'd have to be quite an odd person to want to try and fill it up. This one has three meshes, the centre and each steam port. It's the simplest case, but it's also kind of the worst case because it's the most amount of meshes that you can possibly pack into a one by one by one unit. So for 8,873 pipes, there would be 26,619 separate meshes, which is rather a lot, but it's not really that much, especially given that it can be instanced on the graphics card. Instancing is where you take a piece which is common and you just draw it in thousands of places. Also, there's the scriptable render pipeline Batcher. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that, but it does help if you're sending lots of meshes that are almost identical to the graphics card. So my overly complex shader has now been reduced to this. That's it. That's the only kind of shader I need. I don't need the shader to do all of that work of UV mapping and masking. I just need it to show albedo, color, emission, shininess and metallicness. And that's it. And I think it looks a bit better. We'll come on to that in a moment. Now, given I'm having a new shader, it means I get to choose a new palette, one that doesn't need to have all of this UV mapping nonsense in it. Now, this might be where I'm going a little bit wrong. I don't want to have any textures in the game. I like things to just be clever shaders and color, a bit like Thomas Salah does with his Falconeer games. I also wanted more colors. So I went about learning about how to build palettes online, but unfortunately, most of them about building pixel art palettes, not palettes for games like I'm building, where a lot of the lighting is dealt with by the engine. So this is where I think I might have gone wrong. So here's my new palette, and I rather like it. I've got some new colours in there like the purple and the teal, and I've got the old familiar ones, like green and the bronze and the metals. But I've also got two metals now, a kind of rusty one, as well as the shiny metallic one that the pipes are made of. If I were to start again, I would be using the material charts that Unity has kindly provided. They're all for PBR type shaders, and you can get the albedos, the metallic settings for lots of common things. This is a much better way. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with my palette, but it might change. With a new palette, I had to remap all of the UVs, which is a slightly painstaking task of selecting a bunch of polygons and moving them around the UV mapper. It didn't take too long. I just got quite bored doing it. I can't say that. I can say that. I can't say that. It's not particularly interesting, but it's done for now. But I have to do it again. If I change the palette, I'll be doing that again. Oh, God. Oh. The next thing my plan was to start remodeling. Remodeling before lighting. But. I started playing with lighting too. All of the lighting in Clomper up until now has been real-time lighting, which means the graphics card is calculating the light bouncing with every frame. Now there is another way to do lighting, and that is to bake the lighting information onto textures and then pop that texture onto the model. I started with a single light and I saw what effect that had. Here you can see a light map of the static objects, the directionality of it, the UV chart, which I'll come back to in a moment, and then I ended up with this, and it felt a little bit like I'd gone backwards. You'll see in this image that the light of this front section is really bright compared to the section that's next to us. And that's because they're actually different models. So in the UV map, they're actually different UVs. So there's always gonna be a line there. And that meant that I would have to combine those models together or get rid of them entirely. Now I'm actually going to get rid of them entirely, I'll come back to that in a minute. But there were lots of issues like this that I started to feel like light mapping wasn't for me and might have been unnecessary. And then Peter, the casual Dutchman, came to my rescue in Discord. There's a link to the full conversation below, but he stepped in and said nicely that I shouldn't be an idiot and do light maps and I should just use real-time lighting. He said the performance difference wouldn't be that great, so I'm not really buying myself much. 
And he was right. I was skeptical at first, so I went away and did a test. Here's what it looked like with baked light maps, and here's the profiler trace. It's around 120 frames per second. Here's the same scene, but with real time lighting. And as you can see from the profiler trace, it's about 120 frames per second. So I stopped worrying about lighting and I learned to just love real time. And that's where I'm at at the moment. I shouldn't have really been playing with lighting because it wasn't the next thing in my plan. And as soon as you go off piece, just sort of wasting time. I learned a lot, so I don't think that was a waste, but I did sort of end up back where I started, which is funny if you think about it. The thing I should have been doing is remodeling the floor. The floor? Here is the floor. You know, the floor. The thing you walk on. And it's been boring since the start. It's only been boring for four years now. But I've stopped myself from messing with it. I know exactly what I want it to look like. Here's the design. There's planetary gears in the middle. There's lots of pistons moving and th things moving backwards and forwards and gears. And that's what I've always wanted. So do you want to see what it looks like now? It's all still very much in progress, but this is what it looks like. Let's head over to the first thing that I did. These beautiful planetary gears. I could watch these for ages. Added more gears underneath the legs. There'll be even more coming in there. Imagine all of this black space is filled up. These enormous bevel gears are now connected to these, these wheels here, so they move when they move. And then over here by the boilers, I have a very difficult to see gear. I'm gonna move that and then pistons thrusting backwards and forwards, which is very satisfying. You'll notice here that the pit has changed. I've made that quite different looking. It's got one set of stairs, I've removed the others, and you'll notice that you can't see through it because it used to only have polygons on one side. This whole area is gonna be full with gears and pistons and there'll be steam rising up and there'll be sparks flying off. Oh, it's gonna be brilliant. But bit by bit, I'll build it up. The last thing that I've done that I really want to show you is the new lift door. Now when the lift descends down, it has a door that closes and it used to be a whole bunch of spikes that closed. However, I never really liked that. So I've changed it now to an iris and I love irises. Watch this. <laughs> and in the other direction. Oh, so good. I love that. I could just do it. I'm going to do it again. So I love an iris, perhaps a bit too much. And these are all spiky and angular and it looks great. So I'm really pleased with that iris. There's going to be more animation like that coming. While I was messing around with the lighting, I noticed that Unity had added lit quads in the VFX system, which allows me to light the steam. <gasps> Back in the early days, I started with the HDRP. That's the high definition render pipeline because Unity needs more render pipelines. And HDRP had these beautiful lit particles, but URP didn't, which means all the particles have looked quite white and unlit. Now, I'm not sure what the performance of this is exactly, but I do hope to keep them. If not, I might be replacing them with some volumetric stuff that's coming in Unity 6. There's so many bugs still. <laughs> Why? Why has it not got the shader? What? I haven't messed with that. Ah, oh, this is a build. This is a build. I've not tested a build yet. Runs in the editor. That's like, it runs in the editor. <laughs> it is a bit like it works on my machine. The reason that this devlog has taken so long to get out is that home life has been rather hard. Nothing desperate or catastrophic, just the logistics of having family and work that's a nine to five it just left me with very little energy at the end of every day things are easing up a little bit we're getting back a tempo but really i am just doing half an hour of clomper here half an hour there my steam wish lists are now at 285 which is just shy of 300 so if you do fancy wish listing then do pop down below there's a link of course and if you would also like and subscribe then that does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and helps other people find me. Of course, I'm in a small room <laughs> in the UK. That's where I literally am. But you know, you know what I mean, you know. 
thank you all very much for your continued support and being so patient with me given that I've been silent for a month. Not so silent on the Discord though, so check me out there if you want smaller, more often updates. And me being told by a Dutchman that I'm wrong. <laughs> I've just blown something up. Oh dear, did I set the steam level too high? Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I unlinked it. Yeah, yeah, that would, that would make it go bang. Why is steam? Why is steam coming out the end of this one? That should be a dead pipe. Have we got any other weirdnesses going on here? Yeah, there's another dead pipe. Oh, and there's lots of weirdness with the lighting. Oh, look at this state. There's so many bugs. So until next time, bye-bye.